Well, good morning. First, thank you so much for being here. And I want to thank our speaker for giving me a visa to come to San Francisco, the city of St. Francis. And let me just first uh, say, where, where's Latifah? Uh, where are you? Listen, I just have to first say to you that you exemplify, you exemplify how women, women, women of color, black women, know what being persistent means <laughs> and knowing as our nominee for the highest court of the land said, you know what perseverance is. And with persistence and perseverance, here you are. So give her a round of applause. <laughs> And I'm so ble happy and blessed to be here with so many phenomenal women. And I'd like to, um, of course, thank our great speaker. And she is the greatest speaker of all times, uh, who I honor during Women's History Month. Look, I get to work with her each and every day. I was sworn in by Newt Gingrich, OK? And I worked for Ryan Dellums for 11 years. I know how great or not speakers are. And this is the greatest speaker of all time. And a woman, and that's something else. So thank you so much, uh, Speaker Pelosi, for, for allowing us to do this event in, in your great district, uh, in the neighborhood of Dr. Maya Angelou. Also to Rosie Rios, who's the former United States Treasurer under President Obama. And let me just say something about Rosie very quickly. We began working on this legislation, Lord have mercy, in 2017 in my office. Rosie came in there and she said, look, we have got to do something. There are no women on our coins. And yes, Pastor Brown, we're going to get that $20 bill with Harriet Tubman. <laughs> we're definitely going to do that. But I'm going to tell you, Rosie and I worked on this, and she, she was persistent, and she persevered. And Speaker Pelosi, we had to amend this bill, and we had to rewrite the bill probably seven or eight times. Then we had to find a Republican co-sponsor of the bill in the House. Then we had to find first a, a senator who would see this as important. That was an uphill battle. And then we had to find a Republican senator who saw the importance of this. <laughs> and you know what all that took. It took us <laughs> seven years. But again, persistence and perseverance. Thank you, Rosie, very much for that. <laughs> and to uh, Stephanie Johnson. Dr. Angelo's daughter-in-law, and all of her family members for joining us today. I, I just have to say one thing, because Guy, we had a conversation. Guy was involved in this process, Maya's son, uh, throughout the seven years, and especially once the legislation was signed and the Mint set up the commission and the, the selection process. But uh, we missed Guy today. We talked about this event. I mean, this was like, what, a month ago, a month and a half ago? And he was so joyous about the event. He was so happy about the coin. And he was looking forward to today. And, and so when, when I came here, I said, Stephanie, um, our condolences still go out to you and our love. And um, we miss Guy. I know it's difficult during this time, for you especially, but you, you showed up on behalf of yourself, on behalf of your husband, and on behalf of your beautiful mother-in-law. So thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, certainly my friend, our friend, former mayor and speaker Willie Brown, in the absence of our female mayor of the city of San Francisco, Mayor London Breed, who is not in town, Mayor Willie Brown is here. <laughs> I know you like speaking on behalf of a woman who's the mayor of this great city, Mayor Brown. <laughs> so let me just say a couple of things about the COIN program. From um, 2007 to 2000, and uh, well, we have five quarters now that are going to be circulated. And these quarters, uh, hopefully, you will have uh, well, we'll have one for you today, but there are going to be five quarters that have been already 
put forth by the Mint. Of course, Dr. Maya Angelou. And then we have uh, Sally Ride, who I think has come out already this month. This month. And um, we have the first, um, Ms. Wong, the first actress, AAPI actress in Hollywood. We have the a coin uh, who puts forth the life and legacy and symbolism of the first woman Af Latina superintendent of public schools in um, New Mexico, also a leader in the voting rights efforts. She was an unbelievable woman. And then we have a coin that will be uh, by the head, former head of the Cherokee Nation, whose life and legacy everyone needs to get to know and learn because all of these women not only are on the coins for the first time, but it's their stories and the sim and those symbolic, it's the stories in their lives and how they were able to do what they did. And our young people know, need to know who they are. They need to know who they are, and especially uh, when they, all they know and see on our coins are Washington, Lincoln, and Franklin. Uh, they should know just about, as much about Shirley Chisholm and Fannie Lou Hamer, Sylvia Rivera, uh, Patsy Mink, as they do about all of the guys that are on our currency. <laughs> and so <laughs> this, this is important. And yes, symbolism is important, but it's just one of the many efforts to adequately acknowledge and respect women's contributions. There's so much work to do, though like closing the gender pay gap, protecting the right to comprehensive reproductive health care. <laughs> Securing paid family medical leave, child care, and so much more. And so this is just the beginning. Women's history is our history. And so I hope that these coins will motivate people to learn more about the major contributions of these women in history, hear the stories of their lives, and inspire the next generation of leaders. So now let me just bring forward your representative and my speaker, <laughs> who I just have to say, this would never have happened had we not had a speaker, Nancy Pelosi, yeah. as the Speaker of the House, because she's the one who calls the shots on everything. <laughs> in the, and, and legislation is hard to pass, but she helped us every step of the way to do this. So thank you, Speaker Pelosi. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Amos, thank you for your inspirational prayer this morning. I know you have to go, but I just want you to know that I carry in my heart the words that you have said when we were recently together about gun violence and our young people. Thank you for that and for this and for everything. Thank you, Amos Brown. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I want to associate myself, of course, with the remarks of others that have gone before to talk about the importance of women on the coins. But first, I want to say how happy I am to be in this library. My first official assignment, a long time ago, my children were very little, crawling all over the place, and I was appointed to the Library Commission. <laughs> and, and one of the things that we did, because we were very, we were volunteers, and then they elevated me as a volunteer to be on the commission. And uh, one of the things we did when I became a me member of the Library Commission was to say, we're going to have our commission meetings in the neighborhood library so we can really bring it to the people and hear what they have to say. And again, also to recognize the importance, not only of Central Library, which is important, but our libraries. And this is lovely and it's a joy to be here. The uh, other point I want to make is that Today, as we gather, the uh, Senate is preparing to confirm the first woman ju justice of the African American woman justice of the Supreme Court. Her dignity, her brilliance, her capability, her persistence, as Barbara has said, and, and again, uh, not only as Barbara, but as Latifah has said, have been really so, so magnificent for the country to behold. 
It's long overdue. It's about time. And it, pretty soon it will happen and we'll all be proud. And just another recognition of the role of women and the coins that Barbara has talked about. Before I talk about the coins, I want to talk about Barbara Lee. There's some things I need to tell you about Barbara Lee. Yes, ma'am. You may not know this. But Barbara is one of the most powerful people in Congress, women or men, one of the most powerful. She's the chair on the Appropriations Committee of the something called State Foreign Operations Subcommittee, which means that she is in charge of all of our foreign cooperation assistance and, and the rest. Values-based, pragmatic and concerned about the alleviation of poverty, the eradication of disease, and how we work together with other countries. Needless to say, at this time, when we are dealing with what's happening in Ukraine and we're so proud of the courage of the people of Ukraine, Barbara Lee is the person that, to watch. Because again, when the president says we're giving a billion dollars here or $13.6 billion, it's Barbara Lee's subcommittee which she chairs that makes that happen. We think of her as a champion, a grassroots advocate, a champion here, there, and there, but power. Now we're talking power. And it, uh, she, we were together, we visited uh, uh, the Munich, uh, there's something called the Munich Security Conference, which is the big deal. We're all... Uh, of course, the Chancellor of Germany, the Prime Minister of UK, pre heads of state of all of these countries come together. But because of COVID, narrow, not as many people as before, so more intensely powerful. You should have seen uh, the uh, interest they had in Congress, Madam Chair Barbara Lee, because of her important role in all of this. And when she speaks, people not only listen, they learn. And so, again, we should take... I mean, I don't know how many of people in our communities know uh, of the power that she has and the value, well, you know the values that she brings to it. So I just wanted you to know, as we're honoring these first first woman in space, first woman, uh, uh, what, school superintendent, first head of a Cherokee Nation, all of that, uh, that Barbara Lee is just a complete, total champion in the Congress of the United States on everything that we care about, what we stand for. Values-based, idealistic, but also pragmatic in getting the job done. Persistent, persistent, persistent Congresswoman. Madam Chair, Barbara Lee. Amos, uh, in the Congress, uh, when you get to be a chair of a subcommittee of appropriations, you get the... We refer to them as the cardinals. She's a cardinal. We have to kiss her ring. <laughs> Money, power, Barbara Lee. <laughs> so she had this idea, this idea of women on the coins. She talked about it. Uh, Rosie has been a champion in all of this as well. Uh, 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 Rosie, if she was the, the treasurer of the United States and then bringing that experience uh, to this challenge. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you so much. Thank you. So don't we take, Mr. Mayor, you understand when I say, being a library commissioner, how, how um, important that was. You know, I said, I'm a volunteer. I'm going, I just want to tell you my own story. I'm a volunteer, Mr. Mayor. It was Mayor Alioto a long time ago. I'm getting my kids for a little, little, and we were always volunteering at the library. I said, you don't have to give me the honor because I, I, I'm going to volunteer anyway. It's not going to make any difference in what I do. And he said, what I want to tell you is when you have official recognition of what you do, take it, <laughs> especially as a woman. Could you believe Joe Aliotto as a feminist all those years ago? I, I mean, as a made. <laughs> But I say that to all of you as well, to the women here. Be recognized for what you do. And again, I'm, of course, Malia is so wonderful. We're so, so very, very proud of you, and I'm honored to be here. But Stephanie Floyd Johnson, please accept condolences. The loss of your 
uh, dear husband, and uh, as I said, Rosie Rios, our dear mayor, where Willie Brown. And Willie Brown doesn't come and speak for anybody else except <laughs> Willie Brown. So <laughs> I don't care what he says. He's here for Willie Brown. <laughs> Amos, thank you. Latifa, I'm, I'm so happy you're in the position that you are in. You know what I mean. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you. And Yoshida, you make us so proud. Yoshida Mongozi. Is that, did I say it correctly? Yeshida. Yeshida. Oh, I said Yoshida. I'm combining the two of you. I know you're Yeshida Mongozi. Thank you. And next time we want to hear your, your poem of the same name, of the same name. But let's uh, just talk about Maya Angelou for a moment. Do you know that she worked on the cable cars in San Francisco? How much more San Francisco can you be than that? <laughs> and of course, it, at 15, she set her sights on working as a conductor aboard our city's iconic streetcars, well, like cable cars, a role dominated by white men at the time, you can imagine. Unfazed, she applied for the job every day until she got the job. Uh, the, uh, and of course, the tenacity of her writing. It's no need for me to even go into that. We all carry her words in our hearts. And one thing that she said that is so iconic and so that people quote all the time, they quote it all the time, and they say, my Angelo once counseled, people will forget what you said, people will never forget. People will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. You all know that. Is, and for this and so many other reasons, we're so honored that she is the first to be on a coin. And yes, we will get, uh, we will get Harriet Tubman on that $20, $20 bill, that's for sure. So now, as, as we uh, pay homage to these women who were the first in their fields, and we're thrilled about having the first African-American woman. Um, uh, uh, and and this, just this as a little point. She mentioned in her comments that her birthday was the same day as Constance, Constance same Baker Motley, same day, not same year, but same date. But that, uh, that, that, that woman was, a, uh, Constance was appointed in 1966, right, just right after the passage of the Voting Rights Act by Lyndon Baines Johnson, who had signed the, that legislation. How fortunate for us uh, that this justice comes in at a time when we really need her there on the court as our voting rights are under assault in our country. So, so many reasons for us to be together, for us to celebrate, for us to co collaborate, for us to recognize the challenges ahead, but take pride in those who went before. And in that vein, it is my pleasure to yield back. When am I yielding back to Latifa? Let's hear it for Latifa again. Thank you. Thank, you, Latifa. Thank you, Barbara Lee, for bringing us together to celebrate women. Thank you.